Hey girls, welcome back to my channel. I've done a lot of videos on my 45 pound weight loss journey and shared a lot about the habits that I added into my routine and the ones that I stopped doing to help me lose 45 pounds. But one of the questions you've asked for more detail on are the actual diets that I did throughout high school and college that really had a negative impact on my metabolism, my mental health, and are what I believe caused me to gain that weight and keep it on so much longer than I ever should have. Because here's the thing, I spent years doing tons of diets. I lived in diet culture. I felt like I was failing diet after diet after diet. But really, these diets failed me and they're failing all of you. So if you're still living in the diet cycle or if you've ever tried any of these, make sure you guys watch this video because they're crazy. So these are the five diets I stopped doing to lose 45 pounds. One of the biggest lessons I learned through my weight loss journey and now as a certified personal trainer and sports nutrition specialist was that there's a huge difference between a diet and your diet. So a diet is something that's set up by someone that's usually super restrictive, is in a big caloric deficit, but the most important part of that is the restriction. So cutting out entire food groups, categories of foods, that just make you crazy. Yes, you might shed a few pounds quickly, but you're also gonna gain it back really fast. And a lot of these diets can have long-term detrimental effects on your metabolism, your mental health, everything else. Your diet, my diet, is just simply the foods that we eat to fuel our body. So if you guys have ever used any of my meal plans, you know that there is a balance. We're not cutting things out, right? There's certain things that obviously aren't benefiting you, like alcohol, I still drink, I never gave up alcohol throughout my journey, but I made better choices. But it's really learning how to find that balance that makes sense for your life so you can feel good, be healthy from the inside out, and create change. Because having excess fat on our bodies that's beyond a healthy range causes a lot of problems. It's not just about looking good in an outfit or fitting into certain jeans or a certain number on the scale. There's so much more of an impact that our weight has on our actual health and our physical bodies, our longevity, and just our everyday life. One of the first diets I ever did was in high school. I think probably freshman or sophomore year, like officially doing a diet. And my sister and I read the South Beach Diet book and we're so gung-ho. And I remember I lost like 14 pounds in probably 10 or 12 days, which by the way, is so unhealthy. Healthy weight loss is like one to two pounds a week if you wanna be able to actually maintain it over time and you're doing things in a healthy way. So that was insane, but at the time I was stoked, obviously. Um, sophomore in high school wanting to feel like all fit and cute and whatever. Um, so I lost all this weight. The problem was, while there were good components to the diet, like teaching you about healthier fats and fats that aren't so good for you, and healthier carbs and ones were not so great for you. There was a lot about it that caused so much damage for me. So one of the things that was okay in that diet was all of the sugar-free candy. So you could basically eat anything as long as it was sugar-free. And I don't know if the diet's changed since then, but that was like at the time. So like I got truly addicted to sugar-free candies, sugar-free ice creams, sugar-free anything that had Splenda, Sucralose, all those horrible, horrible, fake artificial sugars in them. And I would eat them all day, every day. Like when I say I'm addicted, like I would go to CVS and get bags of the candy because I was like, it's sugar-free. And I would just eat that all day, barely eat any food because I'm eating like no fruits, no healthy carbs, um, only eating like healthy fats. It was not a good place to be. And of course, as soon as you start adding in any normal healthy balance, bringing those carbs back into your routine, you gain all the weight back. And that was a cycle I lived through high school, like on and off, on and off. I knew that I could lose weight really fast if I did that, but then I'd gain it all back. And there's so many detrimental things that happen to your metabolism when you're going into a really restrictive, low calorie deficit diet for long periods of time, and I absolutely dealt with a lot of that. One of the biggest problems is that artificial sweeteners like those sucralose and the Splendas that I was eating insane amounts of every single day make your brain disassociate sweetness with calories. So you crave more sweets all the time, and you end up gaining more weight because you're adding in more sweets. And again, the sweet, the sugar, that doesn't just come from like candy, right? There's sweets in a lot of other foods. So you crave more and you can end up gaining more weight because of that. 
memories, so many memories. I'm sure you guys have seen the internal shower all over TikTok and here on YouTube, Instagram, wherever, right? So basically you take a tablespoon or two of chia seeds and you drop them in water, you stir it up and you let them get the little gelatinous bubble around them basically, about 15 minutes or so, and then you chug it. And the reason people are talking about this now is because it does have really great benefits for helping like get everything out of your system, you know? Like it makes you go to the bathroom, makes you poop. <laughs> like it can. Um, it's really great chia, obviously has great fiber and great protein. Here's a problem. I did the internal shower way back when in college as a diet. I used it as a way to try to keep myself full in between meals. So I would drink this like four or five times a day instead of having a snack or having a meal because I wanted to be really skinny and I thought that this was the magical fix to doing that and that's how it was marketed at the time. It wasn't about, oh, if you're constipated, put this mixture together, it's a really healthy way, healthy alternative to a laxative or something else, it gets you fiber and it really helps your digestive system, digestive system work more effectively. No, that was not the messaging. It was drink this instead of eating food. Hmm. So as you guys can imagine, this was such an unhealthy way of thinking about food, thinking about my body. I was neglecting and ignoring the fact that I had hunger cues and my body needed actual food. Yes, good protein, good fiber, but it's such a tiny amount. There's like no calorie, it's, it's ridiculous. You need real food. And when I tell you guys in all my videos that I eat so much more now than I ever did when I was 45 pounds heavier, it's because of this kind of stuff. It went into such a caloric deficit that it truly causes so much damage to your metabolism. And what happens when you're in that strict caloric deficit is your body basically starts to shut down and try to burn less calories because it goes into like starvation mode. So when you do eat, it's holding on to things. Instead of burning those calories, it starts storing it. And that can cause so many problems. If you've ever felt like, well, I'm dieting or I've been in this caloric deficit, I've been doing this thing for so long and I lost weight and I'm just stuck. Well, your body is now going so slow, it's not gonna keep burning for you. You have to fuel it appropriately. So this one really effed me up for a while and this isn't even the worst of them. Have you guys heard of the lemonade diet? For the master cleanse. I remember senior year of college, my girlfriend and I doing this one. So the idea of it is you basically take lemons, you squeeze them to make like lemon juice, lemonade, whatever. You add water, you add a little maple syrup, but just a little because those sugar calories, oh my gosh, and cayenne pepper. And you drink that for 10 days. So there's different variations of it where you can have a little bit of calories throughout your day, like raw vegetables and stuff. But essentially the goal was to freaking drink this lemonade for seven to 10 days and nothing else. And if you wanted to be really extra, you would start with a salt cleanse. So drinking insanely salty water to help cleanse your bowels out before then only drinking lemon juice basically for seven to 10 days. Yep. We did that probably three or four different times because I'd get so frustrated because I'd only make it four or five days and then I failed sticking to the diet. So then I'd go into like binging or probably felt like binging compared to this at the time it was probably just like normal eating mode, gain a bunch of weight and then go back to trying this again. And I don't feel like this needs that much explanation. Master cleanse, lemonade, water, diet, it's horrible. Like it is, Horrible, there's no reason for it. If you wanna add lemon to your water with some cayenne maple syrup throughout the day because you feel like there's detoxification benefits or just feels good and maybe get your digestive system moving, great, <laughs> do it. But again, another horrible diet that was in magazines, celebrities loving it, raving about it. All it does is mess your mind up, gets you constantly in the cycle of thinking you need to do something extreme to be able to lose weight. And obviously, one, I don't think I ever even lost weight on this because like it was so absurd and not realistic to stick to. But the second you go back to normalcy, your body goes, oh my gosh, there's food. I don't know when I'm ever gonna get it again. And again, that starvation mode, hold on to everything. And then you just feel stuck again. It's garbage. Another gem I tried for a while was the coffee diet. You'll see a trend of like liquid things here, right? Um, so the coffee diet, the idea was you drink at least three cups of black coffee a day, which 
It's a lot of caffeine, you guys. It's like probably like 600 milligrams of caffeine in a day. Like insane, but you're in college, so I was like, it's fine, like it's, it's great, I gotta do all the things. So the idea is that you drink all that coffee and you also have to be in a very low like calorie, like low caloric deficit. So like, I think, I'd have to look this up, but I feel like it was recommended like 600 calories a day, which is like, no. Like that's not even like your basal met metabolic rate that you need to like survive and live on. It's so horrible. Anyway, you drink all the coffee, you don't eat anything basically. And the great thing is, all that coffee is gonna help increase your metabolism. So you'll burn all this fat, which is BS, you guys. And also, think about it. If your metabolism is increased, what do you want to do? What do you need to do? What does your body start telling you you need? More food. But then you're not supposed to eat food. So you're just like, again, deep, crazy starvation mode, living off caffeine, which we all know by now is not okay, especially that much caffeine. It was nuts. I was so mean, I was so angry, I was so unhappy, and I think about all of the emotional struggles that I was going through during college, and I always used to think about them as being related to my weight alone, like, oh, I was so upset and unhappy because I was overweight. No, I was hungry, you guys. I was upset and unhappy because I was hungry, and <laughs> your girl needed food, because I was living on these crazy diets that mess with your hormones, they mess with your mood. Everything gets out of whack. Again, absolute garbage. And one diet that I did consistently on and off throughout high school and college, and even post-college a bit, was the low-carb diet. <laughs> like ditching all my favorite things. Now, depending on your health, certain doctors might recommend a low-carb diet for a certain period of time, or at least limiting certain types of carbohydrates for your glycemic index and all of that. So yes, there can be health benefits to a lower carb diet for certain people. However, the problem for me and at the time, especially not knowing anything, not having the education and experience I have now, was that low carb diets meant eating and swapping everything for low carb alternatives, which then meant super high processed alternatives. So low carb crapper, crappers, <laughs> low carb crackers and breads and all of these things that were highly processed with all sorts of weird ingredients in them and having hypothyroidism and autoimmune issues, it ended up being super detrimental for me. I didn't lose weight when I would go like no carb necessarily. And I noticed a lot of other symptoms like inflammation, pain in my joints, headaches, increasing. One, we all need carbohydrates. Fats, carbs, and proteins are macronutrients. They are essential to our body's ability to function, for us to do what we need to do. Especially if you're working out, carbs are king. You need carbs. Now obviously I know truly the difference between different types of carbohydrates, those highly processed and refined ones versus like your sweet potatoes or carbs you get from banana and fruit or like grain-free carbs that are good and healthy and add a lot of benefits. But at the time, I didn't know all of that. So I was swapping and there wasn't as many great options now as there are now like replaced with almond flour. Back then it was just like tapioca starches and like just tons of crazy ingredients. So that was one that like I'd always fall back on trying because I was like, everyone talks about it, it's gotta work. But every time I did it, I didn't lose a lot of weight and I had all those other symptoms. So I always warn people against this. It is not a healthy diet for the majority of people to live on, to use, especially if you're just buying all the like gluten-free or low carb things and not paying attention to the actual ingredients inside. And at the end of the day, if you're ever thinking about doing a diet that restricts an entire food group, so I'm talking carbs, fats, proteins, veggies, fruits, right? Any of those, it's probably problematic unless you have a dietary need. For example, if you are lactose intolerant, you have to eliminate dairy. <laughs> okay, that, that's fine, that makes sense. But otherwise, the only thing I'm ever okay with eliminating, honestly, is added sugars because they don't do us any good. They're empty calories. We get sugars in things like our fruit, in grains, like there's plenty there for us to get that we can enjoy the sweetness and everything else. There are great sugar alternatives that are natural, like stevia and monk fruit, 
that don't have those same implications as the artificial ones, go for that kind of stuff if you're trying to make little swaps. But at the end of the day, if you wanna lose weight, it comes down to balancing your nutrition and reducing your caloric intake. So yes, there has to be a reduction in that caloric intake, but you have to be mindful and you have to have a program and truly like have someone guiding you so that you also know how to increase your calories back to a healthy level so that you never hit those plateaus and you also don't go into that starvation deficit mode forever that ends up causing way more problems. All right, so that was it. The top five diets, these are the ones I did the most that I stopped doing in order to actually lose the 45 pounds that I've now kept off for over 10 years. One of the biggest problems at the end of the day is not only that they're super restrictive, but they're one size fits all and there's no room for flexibility. There's no education. There's no way to come back after that. So you always end up gaining all the weight back, right? So that's why for those of you that have done my meal plans, you know I build in so much flexibility so you can make it your own. You're eating all the food groups. There's not restriction in that way. And I really want it to be something that helps educate you on how to build a healthy lifestyle, a healthy nutrition plan for yourself so you can actually maintain that long term. I always love doing this series for you guys, so whatever other questions you have about that experience like that I've gone through and now obviously being on the other side, drop it in the comments, and I would love to obviously answer in there but make more videos for you guys. If you like this, hit the thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. I have new videos twice a week and I have a really fun giveaway coming in just about a week for you guys. So I will see you soon, I love you so much, bye.